In this video, we will be looking at chemical reactions and what mechanisms are needed to take reactants and make them into products. A chemical reaction can be identified when chemical substances react together and the physical properties change. We see this when there is change in the chemical properties of the reactants. That means a new chemical is made. For example, when iron and sulfur are heated in a test tube to form iron sulfide. The color change gives us a clue that a chemical reaction has taken place. In all chemical reactions, there is a change in the energy in the system. In order for the chemicals to react with each other to make products, the bonds between the reactant particles have to be broken. The atoms also need to have enough energy and the correct orientation in order to form new products. The amount of energy to form a bond is the same amount of energy required to break a bond. This is called bond energy. The distance between two atoms when the bond is formed is called the bond length. This is when the atom's attraction and repulsion forces balance out. The change in the energy in a chemical reaction can be represented with a graph like this one. The potential energy in the chemicals is shown on the vertical axis, while the reaction coordinate is shown on the y-axis. That means whether the chemicals are reactants or products. There are some new terms which will be used when we talk about potential energy graphs. We will define these terms before starting the discussion on graphs. Activation energy. This is the minimum energy required to make a chemical reaction happen. Most chemical reactions need energy to be supplied in order for them to begin. Even spontaneous reactions need activation energy. A small amount of energy must be supplied before the reaction can proceed. When two substances are put together at room temperature, they may have sufficient energy to react. In this case, they appear to react without activation energy having been supplied. This is also the amount of energy needed, therefore, to break the bonds between atoms. Activated complex. This is a highly unstable stage that is formed during a chemical reaction. It is a combination of the molecules of all the reacting substances. For example, in the reaction between H2 and I2, the activated complex will be H2I2. The activated complex is the highest energy point in a chemical reaction. So at this stage, the most natural way for the activated complex to go is down, either back to a reactant or a product. Heat of reaction, delta H. In a chemical reaction, energy is absorbed to break bonds in the reactants and energy is released when bonds are made in the products. The heat of reaction is the overall energy change. This value is calculated as follows. Delta H is equal to energy of products minus energy of reactants.
There are two types of reactions based on energy. Exothermic, where heat is released, and endothermic, where heat is absorbed. Let's look at exothermic energy profiles where the potential energy is plotted on the dependent axes, that is, the y-axis. And the course of reaction is plotted on the independent axis, that is, the x-axis. When a process occurs within a container and the container becomes warm, this is because the process is releasing energy to surroundings. Such a process is said to be exothermic. An example of this would be sulfuric acid dissolving in water. During this process, large amounts of energy are released and the solution becomes hot. In summary, exothermic reaction is reaction that releases energy. The reactants have more energy than the products. Energy must be released as the products form. The container in which an exothermic reaction is taking place will feel warmer. The graph represents an exothermic reaction. As may be seen, the products have less energy than the reactants and so the value of delta H will be negative. Delta H is the difference between the energy of the products and the energy of the reactant. Delta H is also known as the heat of enthalpy. An exothermic reaction may be described as one in which there is net release of energy. Exothermic reactions are self-sustaining because enough energy is released to keep the reaction going. The process where energy is absorbed from its surroundings and the container cools down is said to be endothermic. An example of this would be ammonium nitrate dissolving in water. This solution process absorbs so much energy that a drop of water under a beaker in which ammonium nitrate is dissolving can freeze. In summary, endothermic reaction is a reaction that absorbs energy. The products have more energy than the reactants. Energy must be absorbed as the products form. The container in which an endothermic reaction is taking place will feel cold. The graph represents an endothermic reaction. As may be seen, the products have more energy than the reactants, so the value of delta H will be positive. An endothermic reaction may be described as one in which there is a net absorption of energy. Endothermic reactions are not self-sustaining because not enough energy is released to keep the reaction going. Endothermic reactions need a constant supply of energy to keep going. Some chemical reactions occur spontaneously, meaning that the reaction can happen on its own. Two substances put together will just react with each other, for example sodium and water. Many reactions do not start spontaneously, but need energy to be supplied in order to initiate them. When chemical equations are written, the usual way to show whether they are exo or endothermic is to add the value of delta H at the end of the equation. For example, the harbour process where ammonia is made up of hydrogen and nitrogen.
This means that when two moles of ammonia are made from three moles of hydrogen and one mole of nitrogen, 92 kilojoules of energy is released. This could also be stated as delta H is equal to negative 46 kilojoules per mole of ammonia. It is worth noting that the heat of the reaction, or delta H, is always written for the forward reaction. Other ways of giving this information are 3H2 plus N2 goes to form 2NH3 with delta H less than zero or negative. You could also write the released energy as a product showing that it came out of the reaction. The heat of formation changes sign if we look at the reverse reaction, that is from the product to reactant. Thus, if ammonia is broken down into hydrogen and nitrogen, the reverse reaction will be endothermic. Positive 92 kilojoules for 2 moles of ammonia broken. Let us look at how to interpret energy profiles. If we look at the energy profile, we find out the following. Number one, the heat of the reactant is here, the heat of products, so this is an endothermic energy profile. Number two, reading from the graph, we can calculate the activation energy. 250 minus 50 gives us 200 kilojoules. Number three, we can calculate the heat of formation, also known as the enthalpy of reaction. We do that by saying that the heat of formation is equal to the heat of product minus the heat of the reactant, which is equal to 100 minus 50, which equals 50 kilojoules. This is a positive answer, confirming that this is an endothermic reaction. A catalyst can also affect the activation energy. Reminder, a catalyst is a substance that speeds up a reaction without undergoing a change. If a catalyst is added to a reaction, the activation energy is lowered. This causes a reaction to happen faster as a greater fraction of the particles have the energy needed to react. The energy profile for a catalyst reaction is shown in red. Note that the heat of the reaction remains unchanged. Catalysts are substances that increase the rate of a reaction whilst remaining chemically unchanged. A substance which slows down a reaction is called an inhibitor. Catalysts usually work by providing a different reaction route that needs a lower activation energy. The graph illustrates how the activation energy has lowered with the presence of a catalyst. Sometimes that means that reactions can happen faster and at lower temperatures than usual. Thanks for staying with us and join us again for our next Back to Basics video.